I'm Shobana, Senior Director of Engineering for TV here at Google. Thank you for tuning in to see what we've been up to with Android TV OS, our underlying TV operating system, and Google TV, a TV experience that brings together all your content in one place. At CES, we announced that Android TV OS now has over 150 million monthly active devices. We're seeing exciting growth of 36% year-over-year globally, along with strong growth in highly engaged TV markets around the world. This is a testament to the strength of the Android TV OS platform and the value we provide to our users. Thanks to our partnerships with industry-leading OEMs, we're also seeing strong growth in our retail footprint. Our partners' trust in us has allowed us to deliver an even broader selection of Google TV products to consumers, from streaming devices to smart TVs and projectors across a wide range of price points. We've also seen continued expansion with operator partners outside the US. Elente and LG U Plus both recently launched streaming devices with Google TV. And earlier this year, Vodafone announced Android TV as their preferred TV platform in nine countries. This year, we also had our first major update to the home screen since launching Google TV in 2020. As part of this update, we introduced four new content pages in the US for movies, shows, family, and Espanol entertainment. This change helps users find the content they're most interested in, and it also gives our partners new ways to surface their content. And speaking from personal experience, the family page has made it so much easier for my family to find something to watch that everyone will enjoy. We used to spend a lot of time trying, should I say bickering, to choose a movie or a show that everyone would like. But now, we can just click on the family page and find a ton of options that are perfect for everyone. Such a relief now for our family. Just like it did for my family, we hope that these changes will make search and discovery easier for all users to quickly find what to watch next with some help from Google TV. We also remain committed to bringing our users more of the content they want to see. First, we've been working hard to regularly introduce special collections to users that celebrate cultures, perspectives, and moments throughout the year. Second, we have seen a rise in users watching more content from free ad-supported services. So just last month, we announced new free channels are being added to the Live tab on Google TV. Alongside Pluto TV channels, users can now access Tubi, Plex, Haystack News, and Google TV channels right out of the box. No subscription required. Now, all Google TVs in the US have more than 800 free TV channels built right into the Live tab. This gives users more free channels in one place than any other smart TV platform. To make it easier to find what's on and keep all those new channels organized, we redesigned the TV guide, adding filters by topic and genre. We've also been working on bringing easy ways to create great apps on TV. I'll now hand it over to Paul from our developer relations team, who will share updates about Compose for TV, a key feature in this regard. Over to you, Paul. Thank you, Shobana. Over the past year, we have continued our commitment to bringing the best of the app ecosystem to Android TV OS. Today, we're excited to officially announce that we're bringing Compose to TV, allowing developers to build world-class TV apps more efficiently and with less code. Over the last few years, we've heard your feedback on the Leanback API. The design wasn't keeping up with your needs, and the difficulty of customization made it particularly challenging to build beautiful UIs. You also told us how Leanback's MVP design using fragments conflicted with your application architecture. With Compose for TV, we focused on building individual components that are optimized for TV and customizable, leaving you with a blank canvas for designing your overall UI. Just like for other form factors, Compose for TV works especially well with unidirectional data flow. You can describe what the UI looks like with composables while handling the interaction in a view model. 
This allows you to keep mobile, tablet, and TV architectures similar and even share components when they make sense. We're continuing to build new components and solutions for TV apps, and today we're excited to show how some of our favorites will make critical user journeys for TV apps much easier to implement. Wherever you need scrollable content, you can use rows, columns, or grids. These are optimized for navigating using the D-pad of a remote control and focusability to snap content into view as the user browses. Tabro makes it easy to add top navigation, and thanks to feedback from our partners, we've just added side navigation as well. We're giving big and bold indicators for focus list items, buttons, and other selectable components, and we'll see how they can be customized later in this session. We also put a heavy focus on components that let your content stand out. The carousel lets you showcase content in an auto-scrolling banner, using bold graphics with details and a call to action through your own design. And Immersive Lists help scrolling rows really pop by reacting to selected items, for example, by showing a custom background. Compose for TV is built on top of Jetpack Compose framework that you know and love on phones, large screens, and wearables, making the development of TV apps incredibly easy, even for people with minimal coding experience to build apps for TV. Let's check in with Sid Gudipati, a staff designer on the TV team, to see how easy it is to use Compose for TV to build an app. Thanks, Paul. Whether you're creating a streaming app, music app, or a fitness app, for the largest screen in the household, Compose is the go-to solution. Today, I'm going to show you how Compose can make developing for TV a breeze with its variety of pre-built components. Before jumping into the components, let's take a look at a typical layer of a TV app. Apps on TV usually consist of navigation, which can either be on the top or left side of the screen, a hero element that highlights the featured content of your app, content cards presented in a grid format that can scroll both horizontally and vertically, and an occasional special rows that enhances content presentation. Now, let's explore how you can use Compose to build these commonly used patterns. To build the top navigation, use the tab row composable and add a tab composable for each navigation destination. The default focus indicator is a pill, but if you want to switch it up and have an underline instead of the pill, just create a custom indicator and pass it to the indicator property. If you're wondering how to transition between the pages, just use the animated content composable. Here is a quick code snippet. And if you want a side navigation like YouTube, you got the navigation drawer composable for you. You can also create a side navigation that overlays on top of the page content using the modal navigation drawer composable. Another commonly used pattern on TV apps is an auto-scrolling hero section that showcases the featured content in your app. This could either auto-scroll in a certain interval or react to the D-pad left and right events. To do this, you can use the carousel composable. For each slide in the carousel, you can add a carousel item composable to which you can pass the background and content values or use your own composable. Want to customize the animations? No worries. With the content transform property, you can mix and match animations and create something unique. In this example, I'm using slide in vertically with a spring animation instead of the default slide in horizontally animation. Now, let's shift gears and talk about focus system. Unlike touch interfaces, TV mainly depends on visual state changes to indicate which element is being focused on. This gives users a starting point to navigate your app. Highlighting the active element in a bold and clear manner is really important. To make an element stand out, you can adjust the size, apply a thick border, add a shadow, change colors, or mix and match these techniques to create a look that grabs users' attention. Compose makes applying these techniques easy with the Surface Composable. Surface is the backbone of any focusable element on TV. It allows you to make an element larger when focused using the scale property, 
add a border with inset using the border property, and add a diffuse shadow using the glow property. You can also create custom cards using the surface composable, or use one of the five different card layouts provided by Compose out of the box. Now to the content grid. It's the most straightforward and essential way for your users to browse the content on your app. To create a scrolling content row, use the TV Lazy Row Composable. It is similar to Lazy Row, but optimized for TV. The default focus offset is set to 30% of the container width, as shown here. However, you can customize the focus behavior and bring the focus to the start using the pivot offsets property. And to create the vertically scrolling grid, just place multiple TV Lazy rows inside a TV Lazy column composable. Again, TV Lazy column is like a lazy column, but optimized for TV. And finally, for those extra special rows that displays more content about a card, use the immersive list composable. It reveals more information as the user moves from one card to the next. And don't forget to pass the immersive list item modifier to the cards in the list. Check out the documentation for more details. With Compose, building visually appealing and engaging TV apps has never been easier. I thoroughly enjoyed building with Compose, and I hope you will too. Back to you, Paul. Whoa, you really made those screens look great, Sid. Thanks for showing us how easy it really is. Compose experiences are coming to apps like SoundCloud and Showmax, and partners like Plex and Z5 have migrated parts of their view-based application to Compose already. For all the great content you've seen so far and more, check out the design and developer guides we've just published on developer.android.com and the samples we published on GitHub. Building beautiful UIs for TV has never been easier, but our work isn't done. We're still working hard on improving Compose for TV with components already available in alpha and will be released into beta and production by the end of the year. And if you're intimidated by switching from leanback or views, check out our detailed migration guides. We encourage you to begin adopting Compose in your Android TV app today. So head over to the Jetpack Compose for TV release notes for the latest developments where you can submit your feedback and feature requests. I hope this has been inspiring. And if you want to take one thing from today's session, Compose is the way to build UIs on Android. And it's arrived in the living room. <laughs>